Hi, I'm Michael C. I'm a teacher, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm an uncle, I'm a friend, I'm a husband, but most importantly, I'm a father. I created this guy box in 2021 to show to you that being a rapper and a ball player isn't the only way they can provide opportunity for themselves. In season five, Rise Above, we're gonna explore some special guest journey and see how they rose above their circumstances. And they just didn't become good, they became great. Welcome to Rise Above. In this episode today, we talk to Canadian-born seventh grade English teacher at Marshall Math Science for three all. And we talk about her journey, her up and her down, her views on education, and check out the end of how she integrates her English curriculum with real life financial situations and a lot more. Now let's see how she rises above and doesn't let her temporary setback become her permanent failure. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rise Above, brought to you by the Skybox. Today, I want y'all to just sit back and, and just marinate on this one, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to this lady, I've been in this woman's class, and when I say this is a great, great teacher, she doesn't just teach them about English, she teaches them about life. And... I'm saying to this right now, Marshall, I miss y'all. I miss y'all math and science. I miss y'all very, very dearly. But when it comes to this woman, the last day of my tenure there, she was the teacher, she was the teacher of the semester. And I agree. I definitely agree. I want to introduce you, Miss Capri Alwyn. Hi guys. <laughs> What's going on girl? How have you been? How have you been? I've been really well. That was like quite the introduction. So I really appreciate that. That was, that was, just brought a tear to my eye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. No, thank I mean, you. I, I miss, I miss that. I miss everything about math and math and science, man. I mean, you guys, it was wonderful there for a little bit of time I was there. And you were the person that reached out to me, one of the first people to reach out to me. That's really cool. I mean, like, Seriously. I try to keep in contact. With I'm really terrible at it, though. No, like, you did I'm, a good job with it. A great job with it. I would talk to you. You hit me back. We go back and forth. It was it was a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. But, I mean, I will say, like, you miss Marshall, but Marshall misses you. No. Oh, like, like, you are still here. talked about. We miss your voice miss in the hallways. Right that is that booming voice of yours. <laughs> that you can just hear. Trust me. But let's get right into it. When it comes down to it, you are Canadian and a U.S but you're not a Canadian citizen anymore. Correct? That is correct. I let my Canadian citizenship run out. All right. So that you were born in the U.S. or were you born in Canada? I was born in Canada. Oh, okay. So how did you at first become a dual citizen? I had the really easy task of just being born. That's all that it took for me to become a dual citizen. Um, because my dad is U.S. born and my mom is Canadian born. So when you put those two things together, you just automatically get the best of both worlds. Dang, you got that. That, that is tight. That is tight to sit back and just saying that you can do it. You hear you have a perspective in both ways. That, so you have an old, you have a brother and two half sisters. Am I correct? I have a brother and I have two step siblings. Okay. Step siblings. All right, all right, all right, all right. And you are closer, you're close with your father. I am very close with my father, yes. That was one thing I did notice, like one one time that you were teaching, you incorporated, you incorporate your family, not, not problems or situations, but you put family into your teachings and that seems like it works for all your students. Tell me one thing on how that, how do you do, how does that work for you? 
Um, I find myself to be really brutally honest with my students. And I feel like that really gives them perspective, but also like it makes it real for, for them. Mm -hmm. So I will, when I'm having a bad day, I tell them guys, I'm not, I'm not feeling it today. Yeah. I'm not me today. If I lash out at you, I apologize now and I will apologize again, right. but we've all had these days. So right. I just, I hope that you guys could like work with me. And I find that that just being real with them, it really, really like sends a message like, Oh, this person's actually human, not just a teacher. And I feel like students have such a hard time seeing us as human because it, we, we try to be these perfect people right? and we're not, and we need to tell them that. I agree. I agree. It's almost like telling them like, yeah, we used to be in that same seat you were in. Absolutely. We were in the same seat you were in. Who, who influenced you to become an educator? Um, I don't, I don't know if I had a specific influence. It kind of literally fell into my lap. It just fell in your lap. It I did. Like I like that. I like that. Have you ever incorporated your Canadian culture to convey a lesson to a student and explain why? I think I convey culture in general because I know like I was taught that we need to like accept everybody's like culture mm -hmm. and like culture is just beliefs and behaviors of a specific society. Correct. Correct. And in this last book or novel that I taught, it was Tuesdays with Maury and he dives into all of that. And that's how I like to start out the year. I like to start out talking about how, you know what, we have so many differences, but if we just look at how we're alike, we can be more accepting. We can literally like create this human family and treat everybody like, they're just your family. They're the same. Exactly. So I really try to just, hey, we're all different, but really, we're all the same. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know about you guys, but I, we got a good one coming going on right now. A good convo coming on. But we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back on Rise Above, brought to you by The Skybox. Back on Rise Above with Capri Alwyn. Thank you, thank you. You already know what it is. Hit that like and subscribe button. You already know. Let's get back into it. When it comes down to it, you graduated from SHIP. Yes. Where you got your master's from Concordia. 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 Yeah, it's you know one of those online ones. There you go. There yeah. you go. Let's talk about. Let's go. Let's go backwards. Let's go to SHIP. Talk about those days. Okay, let's talk let's about talk them. About those do days. I remember them? Yeah, I know I do. I remember a couple of little shit parties. You know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is with them shit parties. It was popping. But anyway, anyway, when it comes to the education, what did you value out of the education at Shippensburg University gave you? I feel like that's a really difficult question because I don't think colleges do it right. That's good. I, I want to hear more. Um, I think that being an educator, you learn more in like in the actual moment, like in teaching in the classroom, you can't learn how to teach in a room full of college kids that already know how to learn because right. it's just, it's not applicable. So I truly believe that like colleges, you should have two years doing like your gen eds and like your majors. And then for the two other years you should spend it kind of like an internship in the classroom because you need at least two years fully immersed into a school in order to be prepared for what school brings you i remember having a classroom management class and my first year of teaching i was teaching uh, frankenstein mm -hmm. and i was teaching uh, high schoolers and this 16 year old he came up to me and he goes, you'll miss, can I use the bathroom? And we were taking a quiz. So I was like, hey, like you, you can wait. And he goes, no, I can't. And he drops his pants and he pees in my trash can. Oh my God. And I swear to you, no college class will ever prepare you for that moment. I agree. I think a lot of first year teachers need to get the different atmospheres of teaching. They need to get an urban for like a semester 
get the rural for a semester, get suburban for a semester, get a feel of a whole thing. So then when Preach. you're going in, you can't say, you can't feel blindsided because you've been in every different atmosphere that they can throw at you. Right? Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with that. Let me ask you one silly question. Why do teachers drink so much coffee? To survive. It's just, I mean, I feel like that's an adult thing, though. No, because I don't drink coffee. Oh. I don't, I've been around teachers that drink coffee upon coffee, and I'm like, you're only going to be here for eight, eight hours. Yeah, it's, it, it's draining. It, it really, it mentally it's draining, but also, right. like, to me, coffee is happiness. And if I could have that cup of happiness, I just, I become a nicer human, and then I'm nicer to my kids. So my kids will literally be, Miss Allwine, do you, do you need a cup of coffee? Oh, yes, absolutely. Please go make me one. Oh. Like, that is, they know when I start to change. Wow. Yeah, like, I hulkify. I, I hulkify. I do. I'm I turn green. <laughs> I turn green. I get really big muscles. I hit five foot. It is really scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I love it. I love it. I love it. When it comes to teaching, how many hours do you spend on teaching? All to, like in I'm one day? From grading paper, from putting curriculums together in one week. How long do you? Oh, man. Okay, so there's 168 hours in a week. Correct. So I would say I spend at least probably 100. What part consumes you the most? Grading. That's interesting. I specifically. I, I, would think the, I thought the curriculum would be the. the Part, but it's it, hmm. oh so like I feel like for new teachers the curriculum would consume the most amount of time mm -hmm. but once you've been into teaching and you know what you want to teach like most of the lessons are already created you just make little tweaks here and there okay, okay. but I know okay. like I've been I'm teaching the same thing I taught last year with a few minor tweaks so got you, got you. so your minor tweaks might just be with the student on what who you're teaching well, the the tweaks come from, um, like, I do a lot of projects, mm -hmm. so my tweaks come from, oh, this one project didn't work out, let's change it, and give them a different option. Right. So, right. It, it normally comes towards the end, or, like, that packet really didn't work out, there were a few spelling out errors, let's change it. Got you, got you, got But, you. as an English teacher, you know, sometimes you have to grade 117 essays, and then you have to put yourself with 117 hats to saying, does this person get it? Yes. Yeah. So that like I can get that. That that means I have to have that same focus on 117 people. Nope. Don't know <laughs> if I can do that. Well, and it's really Not difficult yet. because like you have like really high hopes for the, your like your first couple periods. Right. So you grade them really difficultly. But then by you get to like kid 80 you're and you're like, like, oh man, will this grading ever end? So right. then you start grading a little more leniently. Lenient, right. Yeah. So it's always easier for your, your end of the, the year classes. The end all the time then if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely not fair. After all the stress of teaching, <laughs> when it comes down to it, you're, we're going to, now I'm going to go to the most wonderful time it's thanksgiving of the year. you're too early for this what do you do on your off time i teach <laughs> oh my god <laughs> hey there's nothing wrong with that that means it's in your blood it is i i don't know what i would do if i wasn't a teacher that, that's a grind that's what's up man that's what, what how far do you want to go with it uh the dream is to be a college professor there it is and i want to teach people how to teach no because i feel like we don't have enough good teachers and that's not i'm not trying to say that i'm like the best teacher right. like that's not it at all but i feel like we're not producing like top-notch teachers i agree so i feel like i i really want to get into the the college system and like start teaching them different ways of doing the same thing okay there it is there it is I don't know about you guys, but this conversation is unbelievable. And you know what? We're going to stick with this conversation in one moment. We'll be back right, right after this on Rise Above, brought to you by the Skybox.
All right, all right. We're back. We're back. I'm glad you didn't leave that spot. I got Miss Capri Alwyn at Rise Above, brought to you by the Skybox. Let's get let's get into the serious questions real quick here. All right. What methods of teaching sets you apart from the others? Um, I like to do a lot of projects. Like I, I'm that teacher. A lot of people say, "Man, I wish I wish I had you as an an ELA teacher." Um, because I don't believe in essays. I'm going to say why I would, because that means I can expand my mind. And I completely understand that. I find that there are other ways of expanding your mind. Correct. So I do a lot of projects, and I offer a menu of options mm -hmm. for students to do. So like, if I do have a kid who is more analytical mm -hmm. and who wants to kind of do more of an essay type thing, mm -hmm. have at it, do do your thing, right? Right, right? But if I have somebody that wants to be more creative and build something, I have those tactile people, you know, then I want them to be able to do that. So it's being able to find ways to teach the same thing, but have them produce something that's different. Right. So that's definitely something that I find that's, 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 that's different. That's very different. That's very different. We were talking about there's a change, there should be a change in a higher education system. Let's go, let's go even, we're going to go back, let's go down a little bit. What should the U.S. change about the education system right now with our youth? Um, not putting such high standards on standardized testing. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and I, I know, like, we're preaching to the choir with, with most of this. I feel like right. a lot of people are just like, you know, Dan, with standardized testing. Right. You know, it's nothing, right. it's nothing new. I know in other countries, they, um... If they have standardized testing, it's not all the subjects all at once. Mm -hmm. Like, they might do, okay, for grades three to six, it's English. Right. And then in ninth grade, it's math. In eleventh grade, it's science. Correct. So, like, they structure it a little bit different. Right. So, I feel like we need to change that. But we also need to change the way, we're, way we are teaching to be, like, 21st century. Like, we have technology now. But you're going with technology on people that are still here that are, like, not really tech savvy, we'll say. And you're not wrong, but I just feel like we really need to be trying to, like, make a better future. Because they're going to be creating things. Our students are going to be creating things right. far beyond our grasp right now. I would agree. I would so, agree. if we're only teaching them for like right now, we're never thinking futuristically. Correct. And Correct. if we're never thinking futuristically, then we're just creating these people that are going to continue and like they're going to make the same mistakes that we're making. And we need to really start honing in on like creative thinkers and people thinking outside the box right. and people really changing for our future. What about financial literacy? So, before I was an English teacher, I taught careers, mm -hmm. and financial literacy was huge for me. Um, still to this day, I incorporate it into my classroom. So I pay my students, it's crypto money, but I pay my students uh, for coming to work on time, for doing their work, right. um, for turning in their assignments, right? And then if they stay after school and help me clean, then they get um, like overtime money. I have a school store that they could buy things, but they have a bill to pay mm, at the end of the month. There you go. And they they have to pay for their desk. And if they don't have enough money to pay for that desk, the government got to come in and take it. I take I take it off. I take the table of our desks off and they lose the table. They still have the seat because I don't want kids like up and running around. How do they how do they gain that money back? By coming to class on time and by doing the work and turning in assignments. How can I be able to, if, if I'm in the mind I have right now, I want to monopolize my money. Mm -hmm. I do all that. Yeah, that bores me now. But I want to be able to say, how can I be able to say, all right, how can I be a business? Because you're now the government. Correct. You're taking everything. You're, you are the... You're, you're the government. So how can I be able to be partner with the government? I want to be the Jeff Bezos, the Jay-Z <laughs> with the government, in your government. How could I do that? 
So I'm going to offer my students to, if another kid doesn't have enough money for their desk, my, my upper kids who have enough money, they can loan out money and then they can be paid back with interest. Mm. So one, then the kids are learning about interest. They're learning about loans. They're learning about, hey, if I can get these five kids to get a loan from me, then I can make more money by the interest that I'm getting. That, that's amazing. I, I need a lot of people to hear that. That, that. That's amazing. Thank you. That is flat foot amazing. And a lot of people really need to get on that train. Like, seriously, that that is amazing to hear. Like, you're tapping into something. You're tapping into the world of what the kids need. That, that, that's, that's amazing. That's, I truly just want to teach them real world stuff that's it and that's like i i understand spelling is important don't get me wrong but we have autocorrect now mm -hmm. so how important is it for them to be able to spell a word it's more important for them to know how to correct their spelling correct like using technology to correct it it's more important for us to teach them hey like instead of writing this essay let's write a resume Let's do interviews. Let's, you know, let's write a speech. Mm -hmm. Because those are the things that will make them more successful out in the real world. Mm -hmm. And that is what they need. That's it. That's it. With, with all of that being said, because if I was a student in your class, you could not, not, I could not not be motivated in your class. But there could are students that students are that? not motivated <laughs> in your class. So what do you do for them? To be honest, I have personal talks with them. Okay. I... I asked them. I had one today actually with one of my students. And we like we sat down and we had this honest conversation. And he was like, "Look, like I get good grades, like all I need to do is achieve this B and then my parents are proud." And I said, "Well, that's that's good, but what's going to make you proud?" And he goes, "I I don't know what's going to make me proud. Like I don't think I'm going to need this." And again, that makes him not motivated. Right, but right. now I understand why there's no motivation. But there is a little motivation because he's saying that his parents are pushing, but that's not enough motivation for him. No, and like, you want to, I always tell them, I'm like, you know, you're setting limits for yourself, but what, what are your actual limits here? Like, you don't know unless you try. Right. And in life, you're, you don't want to set your own limits. You're going to want the world to tell you no. And then you're going to push back and say, yes, right. and I need to create kids and I feel like that's just by having that simple talk with them. I, I agree. And I, showing them that you care. But you got to remember, what is the what is the biggest factor when it comes down to having a limitation? It's not the people around you. It's your mind. It is yourself, 100%. Your mind, your mind is can make you limited in a lot of things. Let's get to one, let's get to a serious subject. Last year and this year, We've seen a lot of school shootings, a lot of school shootings, and they've been on the rise. I'm a parent, so how could you, as a teacher, reassure that, let's say, my child would be in safe custody under your watch? That's a really good question. I don't know if I have an answer, and that's, I want parents to know that I care enough about them, their kids. Mm -hmm. And I, all I could do is show them that. Right. But I, there's uncertainty everywhere we go. So I might even pose it to, well, how do you know they're safe when they go to the movies? Agree. And that's sad to say because you've seen it, but now it's to the point. I, I, I would have never, ever would have thought that taking my son to school, like, Oh my God, it could be a threat. It's not a threat now. Like right now, it's definitely not a threat. And I hope in the future it's not. But but it's just like my, my one friend used to say, everybody is an action, there is a reaction. Yes. And that's, and that's the sad part. It is. And my biggest question is, you know, you don't hear about this type of thing in other countries. So are they not happening or are we just not hearing about them? We're not hearing about them. We're not hearing about them. Okay. I, I, that's what I'm, I'm going down to. We're not hearing about them. Because if we heard about them, then I think it would be 
more of like a worldwide thing, but I don't think they happen as often. And that's that's my point. What are other countries potentially doing that we're not? And that's something that we really have to like take a a hard look at ourselves. And I mean, you know, to bring up Michael Jackson, we need to look up ourselves in the mirror and make a change. Right. You know, like right. if they're doing something, we need to figure out what they're doing. I agree with that. Well, you know, huh. so, thank you. This is our final break with Capri Alwyn, and we will be back. Hey, if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, hit me up at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. I will read and I will respond to every question, thought, or concern. And I may even put one or two questions on the next episode. And also remember, be good to yourself, y'all. All right, here we go, here we go. We're back, we're back, we're back with Miss Capri Alwyn on Rise Above, brought to you by the Skybox. All right, we're going to finish this up. We're going to wrap this up with the final, final couple questions here. What advice would you give to a student that may be pursuing education in a secondary education career? I would tell them that it's a very rewarding thing to do. You have to be able to, you really have to want to do it, mm -hmm. you know? I and agree. I know a lot of my students, they always tell me like, I don't know how you do it. And I say, it's because I have the desire to. Yeah. Like you, you have to want it. Right. And it's not a field that you go into because you just think it's gonna work out. Right. You, you truly have to have that desire. I agree with you. And as long as you continually have a desire to, uh, to learn, then I believe that you'll make it. You'll be okay. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. So, on that note, I got the thing called the pod deck. With this pod deck, what we do here is I'm gonna ask, well, the pod deck's gonna ask you two random questions. You get the two random questions and just answer them right off the right off the rip. All right. So, got the pod deck here. She picked two cards. All right. All right. Tell them what they are. All right. So the first one is what is your most perfect day? And to be honest, I feel like not that every day is perfect. Oh no, my every day is not perfect. Oh, no. But I feel like my perfect day, I would wake up and I would have a cup of coffee. No. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> there we go. Um and I would go to school okay. because I truly love what I do. Right. Um and then I would have another cup of coffee. Number 2. That's uh, number absolutely. 2, y'all. Um, but then after my day, I would go home. I would spend it with my husband. There you go. And maybe we'd watch some like TV, have a nice dinner, and then go to bed. You know, like that is, Chill. it's really, really average. You're chill. But it's, it's perfect right now. Chill. You're a home girl. You're a homebody girl. I, I am. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Number two. Number two is, if you could have any or make any invention, what would it be? I know what mine would be. Ooh, do you want to tell me yours first? Mine would be very easy. I could be able to teleport anywhere possible. So I save gas and I save money and I save time. Oh, okay. That's that's going to be way better than what I say. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so I am a huge um, ASL community. Okay. Like the, the deaf and hard of hearing community. I'm yeah. a huge advocate for them. Okay. Um, and I find it really difficult for people who don't know how to sign. Okay. So I would want to make, I would want a technology to be made because I have no idea how to do this, okay. but I would want a technology to be made for people in the hearing community to be able to communicate with the people in the deaf community if they don't know sign. That's beautiful. So, and I know our school did that in the month of September. They were, our kids were trying to come up with these technologies as well, but I just, I, I'm a huge advocate for them. That so. Oh man, that, that's huge. Thanks. That's huge. So if anyone knows how to make something like that, um, you already you know, hit up the sky box. You know what it is. Absolutely. Uh, you have any shout outs? Um, I would love to give a huge shout out to my husband, Drake, um, not the rapper, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
he is my biggest supporter. Um, he tells me that I can do it every day, and he supplies me with all my coffee. There you go. So you go, he, is, uh, he is my rock and my hero. So shout out to you, babe. All right, me. Shout out to Nico. Shout out to Noel. You know who you are. Shout out to everybody at, at Sport and Rise Above the Skybox. Shout out to you, Ms. Capri Alwyn. Thank you for coming to the Skybox to Rise Above and giving us everything about teaching, school citizenship, and everything else, and a lot more. I mean, I'm here for you. Yes, there it is. Literally. There it is. I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you like the Skybox and like this episode, all you have to do is hit me up at the one, the number one Skybox at gmail.com and with your thoughts questions or concerns and if you'd like to see someone else on the skybox and i'm michael c from source of life over the mic and next until next time be good to yourself y'all